Hi, I'm Rob Cousin. Welcome to my shop. I got a little tip for you when it comes to cutting half-blind dovetails. I uh, taught this recently, and one of the guys said you should do a YouTube on it, so here we go. Um, if you're using the new method where we use a sawtooth blade to transfer tails to pins, so you set your tailboard on there, leaving your waist intact. My marking gauge represents the thickness of my saw kerf. Offset the tailboard, in this case to my left, by the thickness of one saw kerf. So I'm going to go to the right side of each tail. Now the problem here, or one of the problems is you don't want to cross the end lap. It would look really bad if you've got these scars running across your end lap. So you drop down and then you carefully drag that sawtooth blade, which happens to be the exact same um, thickness and set as my dovetail saw. And the problem with this is you can't, it, you can't uh, just whip them out like you can a through dovetail. You got to do it very carefully. So I do the right side of each tail. I'll just do a couple and get the point. Drag that through. Careful not to scar the end lap. Okay, now if we were to turn that over, I have to have it facing me. Make sure it's standing plumb in the vise. I grab my drawer dovetail marker and I'm going to use the uh, square side to transfer lines more or less as a guide. Now here's the problem. In the process of trying to saw these I wasn't able to come right out to here so the saw kerf from the sawtooth blade stops shy of there. Well that makes it kind of tough to get that to line up into that saw blade. In fact it actually is a bit of a guesswork so much so that I don't like doing that. So let me show you a way around it. Now it involves a little bit of what we might call a, uh, a faux pas, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. When I saw my tails, instead of stopping right on the line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue the saw cut on the inside to go below the gauge line. Now I'm stopping on my gauge line out here, but on the back side I'm following all the way through. Now I would do all of these, and I wouldn't be doing it after the fact, I would do it first time round when I'm actually cutting the tails. Now we'll put that tailboard back in place, prop it up with my plane, get it flush with the top of the plane. It's got to be perfect. Set that back, put this in place. The right side allow for my offset now when I come in here I'm able to reach down and get in fact if you look underneath carefully you can see that the blade actually comes out and you can now go in there and start that kerf mark below the top of the board you'll see what I mean when we remove this which is going to allow you a much better way of starting the cut and it will result in a much more accurate job. I'll just do this third one and then we'll flip it over and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, now we flip this over. The saw kerf has come right below, so now you can set your saw in there in fact, depending how deep you got it, you can actually get right up to the line. Now you can go ahead and there's no guessing as to where you're supposed to start. This allows for a far more accurate joint. And the only drawback, if you want to call it that, is that you're going to have your marks, your saw cuts running a little bit beyond your line. However, when you put this together, it really isn't that noticeable. It's kind of tucked away in the corner and it's not bad but it makes it a whole lot easier to follow up with those pinboard cuts by being able to get your saw right into the kerf. Hope this helps. And if you haven't seen the way we do this uh, transfer method, we, I've got several videos. If you just look up uh, hand cut dovetails, a different approach, part one, two, or three, it'll go through and show you all of this. Hope it helps.